Hello, everyone. You're listening to Those Are the Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. I'm Victoria. And I'm Abby. And we are changing culture, bringing back traditional values. Okay, you guys, we have our true crime expert person, Abby, on with us today. Um, We're going to be talking about a very interesting case, um, the Maura Murray case. Vic has never heard of this. um, so I don't follow true crime. Yeah, she's not really that into it, but we're trying to pull her in at least a little bit. Um, And... She, everything is going to be her honest, like, real reactions. We're going to go over what happened and theories, and then we're going to do, um, and apparently also, too, this is, like, one of the most listened or most covered cases, which I guess when I started doing research, it kind of was, but I was listening to another podcast talk about, like, true crime podcasts in general, and the guy was like, yeah, he was a true crime podcast, and he's like, yeah, and people always ask me to do the murder the Maura Murray case, but I mean, it's the most covered one. Why would I do it? And this was already after I decided that we should do the Maura Murray. And I was like, okay, like, geez. But no, I think it's um, an interesting case. I think that it's also too, I do think it's always good to get exposure when someone is missing and they haven't been found because you really never know who's going to listen and who knows something. Um, and not saying, you know, that our, someone in, I mean, someone in our audience could know something. We don't know. Um, but I do think like, any missing case, I think, is so important to cover. Um, so, yeah, so this is a very popular one. Um, you can find tons of different podcasts on it, but hopefully we're going to, so we're going to start doing a new thing at the end where we just talk about, like, a lesson that we learned from this. Um, so hopefully there'll be, we'll have a different spin on it, or it'll be, this will still be a unique experience, because at the end of the day, either way, it will be unique, because there's no other podcast like ours. <laughs> Okay, so Abby, uh, let's take it away. Okay, so I really didn't know very much about this case before I researched it. Really? So, okay, yeah, good. I know. Surprising. Yeah, uh, it's just the most popular I, I case. I listened, <laughs> right, right. I I remember I listened to the Missing Maura Murray podcast like a while ago. I, it was yeah. years ago at this point. It came um, out in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I listened to that a little bit, but it's been a while. So I had to like refresh myself a bit, <laughs> but all right, I'll get into it. So Maura Murray was born on May 4th, 1982 in Hanson, Massachusetts. She was the fourth child of her parents, Fred and Lori Murray. And let's see, she was raised in an Irish Catholic household, which I love because I'm Catholic. <laughs> Um, so is Vic. Mm-hmm. Oh, are you? Cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah. My husband um, was Catholic, and then I, like, converted when we got married. Oh, awesome. Very cool. So her parents divorced when she was six, and then after that, she primarily lived with her mother. So Mora was a star track athlete all through high school. Uh, and she, ha- she was very smart. She had a stellar academic record, and that got her into West Point in New York, which is one of the best and most selective is, schools yeah. in the country. It is very prestigious. Like, they do not just let, I think I heard somewhere they only let in, like, 10% of people. Like, that's their acceptance rate, 10%. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because it's military affiliated, they do all these, like, background checks. Like, yeah. And stuff. Yeah, so that's also, too, just something um, to point out that, like, for her to get into West Point, means that at least um she had some sort of they did probably did a moral character check on her so that's well, just something ha- to think about you have to have either a congressman or a senator from your home state recommend you oh like, yeah you have to that's like that. mm-hmm. so you have to have them recommend you on top of making sure you have good grades you're physically able to do it um because yeah. they have to essentially they do boot camp right before their semester starts so like the six weeks of basic training is done like they go to school at the end of june yeah so these are good things to remember about her character once we get more into um the story okay continue right yeah she was like a parent's dream basically growing up yeah a good athlete good academics pretty much stayed out of trouble from what it seems like yeah so she went to West Point and she was studying chemical engineering. She was there for three semesters before she like had this huge change of heart and decided she wanted to go into nursing. So then well, she- Okay, wait, sorry. So 
to cut you off really quick. So in, I want to say two of the podcasts I listened to. So I listened to um, Crime Junkies podcast and The Mile Higher, uh, which is Kendall Ray. I don't know if you... Uh, do you ever listen to the, her or watch I've never her listened, YouTube? no. Uh, she's actually, Kendall Ray is how I, she's the one that I first started getting into it on YouTube. Anyway, so I listened to them. So what they, according to their research, they said that she left um, West Point because she got in trouble for stealing something out of um, Fort, oh gosh, why can I remember it? Fort, my, what? <laughs> Okay, one second. Fort Myers, I believe, is what it was. The okay. A okay. Ah, sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, and I want to bring this up because this kind of also um this kind of also uh goes into maybe her state of mind. Uh yeah, Fort Knox. Uh, Okay. Fort Knox. So she stole something out of Fort Knox and um, they told her to take a leave of absence. And that's when she went to um, mm-hmm. went to UMass. Well, okay, mm-hmm. so here's the thing, though, when um, and Crime Junkie said this. So when the information about her first came out, no one knew that little side note and some other things that they said um, that I don't know if you'll get into it, but if not, I'll bring it up. But everybody just knew her as this, like, picture-perfect daughter. No one knew about her saying something from Fort Knox. Um, but then eventually more information started to come out. So then it kind of changed, shifted people's opinions, and it kind of shifted how things were. But she saw something from Fort Knox, and when her friend asked her, like, why did you do this? Why did you do this? She was like, um, I don't know. I just, I just did it. And it's interesting that she would do that. Because she, well, one goes to West Point, and obviously that's going to be something that they're going to like, you're going to get in trouble for that. And then yeah. B, it seemed very much out of her character. That's what everyone, every yeah. podcast that mentioned it, that's what they said. Like it was very much out of her character. Yeah. I mean, the military takes stuff really seriously. Too. Yeah. Like, held to a higher standard than just regular civilians. So, yeah. So they told her something like stealing is like bad, bad when she's yeah. at West Point. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, you know, trying to think about her during that time, um, like, why would you do that? I know that people growing up, they would steal things for the thrill of it, but I just don't understand, like, you have so much to lose. Well, why you would you outgrow that? it. Like, the fact yeah. that she's doing it while a cadet at West Point, or, like, yeah. right after, like, like there and has it was to, makeup, like when you go to West Point, there's small. yeah. Well, when you go to West Point, like there's some level of maturity, you know. Yes, you have to have, and the fact that her being young twenties is still still stealing, like there's something not quite right, like maturity wise, mentally, yeah, like yeah. not quite not quite right. Yeah, yeah. It almost seems to me like this kind of was a the start of her kind of going down a different path like yes. than she was yes and that's what I think that was the point everyone made when they were bringing this up is it kind of this is where it kind of goes downhill because like you said earlier before she was like the perfect student she did, had good grades she was um you know athletic she was everything almost a parent's dream pretty much and then all of a sudden in college she did that thing I like I think it was a third semester and it just I mean so many things spiraled after that some would say that the s word hit the fan in that <laughs> situation yes yeah, yeah no that's yeah, yeah. and it just well, kept spinning <laughs> yeah I mean the fact too that she kind of she sort of did a 180 she went yeah. from West Point to UMass Amherst which great school but very different from West Point right you know? oh Except yeah West Point <laughs> yeah and yeah, changed I, her major to something completely yep. different. Yeah. Like, yeah, she she stole and then now all of a sudden she's just like doing a 180. So yeah. I, it's probably this is kind of the start of it. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. And you go from West Point being very strict discipline to um, I don't know if we have any Amherst people listening, but like Amherst is kind of like the party school in Massachusetts. Oh, is, is it? My I understanding? didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that either. I had looked there for grad school, and um, it's kind of like out in the middle of nowhere, and, and it's usually, very different from West Point. Yeah, and usually if a school's in the middle of nowhere, there's only a couple things you can do. Study, and drink, and drugs, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Wow. Sure. Okay. That is okay. This is um okay. This is why I think it's good to talk about it and different people because you Vic know things for example about West Point and about UMass that we had no idea and that's how this makes yeah. us different okay well like and I would happy. say my whole West Point deep dive is from a sociology class where we like read a book following like cadets for four years oh that's mm-hmm. it was such an interesting book yeah mm-hmm. all right Abby all right back to it uh so where like things started to get weird was on Thursday, February 5th, 2004. I mean, she was kind of on this like downward spiral almost, it seems like, but this Mm -hmm. is the day when like people started noticing she's acting weird, something's going on. So on February 5th, 2004, uh, Maura was at work at the time and she spoke on the phone with her older sister, Kathleen. I guess they talked about Kathleen's relationship problems with her fiance or something like that. Uh, yeah. Around then 10 30 p.m., Maura was working and she just broke down crying. And her supervisor came to her desk, like to ask what was wrong. And she was like inconsolable. And then when she like finally calmed down, she just like zoned out and was like not responsive. And her supervisor didn't really know what to do. So they had someone escort her back to her dorm at the, this was like a few hours later at 1 20 a.m. And when she was asked what was wrong, she just said, my sister. And nobody really knew for a long time what they talked about on the phone. Yeah. Until, like, years later when her sister Kathleen explained that at the time she was a recovering alcoholic. And she had just been discharged from a rehab clinic earlier that evening before they had that phone call. And I guess on her way home, her fiancé took her to a liquor store which caused her to like freak out and that's why she called Mora. it's uh, it's interesting to me because that she had this just kind of strange reaction to that yeah like okay so in the documentary i watched on peacock which was free by the way um they interviewed the sister i didn't finish it um but in the episode i saw they interviewed the sister and the lady interviewer she was like yeah, like, if I heard that information, I understand, like, my, I would have a bad reaction, too, trying to get the sister to, like, I guess, it seemed like she was trying to get the sister to, like, understand, like, maybe understand why she was so upset, but I just don't know if that was the appropriate response to your sister. Not saying that you wouldn't be upset, I'm not saying that at well, all. Well, what just was saying, the response? So, yeah, I don't think you're clarifying she, that. She was, like, sobbing, and or she was, like, crying sobbing everything and then she okay, just okay. was kind of talking okay okay is that the right now. word yeah yeah she was just zoned out not yeah. responsive nobody really knew what to do or what was happening yeah i, I just think it's kind of odd yeah that just seemed like a, a strange reaction i mean I, i'm trying to think like if my brother was an alcoholic and all of a sudden he relapsed or well she didn't even relapse she just implied or like she just went to a liquor store or something like that I don't know if that would be my initial reaction. I think it would be for me more concern. Yeah. Than... I don't think I would start sobbing at all. No, yeah. I don't think that I would either. I would more be like, who can I reach out to to like make sure he's okay? Like yeah. something out. But yeah. I mean, we all react to things differently. So that's true. Who knows? <laughs> but I also think that like kind of leads me to almost wonder if that was really the truth because I mean sometimes you just and I'm not saying it's right but like maybe you don't want to talk about something so you just make something up like maybe something else was going on and she didn't want to say maybe it was boyfriend trouble and like I know that like if I was having boyfriend trouble I don't really like to tell people like I'd just be like I don't know it's x y and z so maybe it was something like that I don't know I just I'm very skeptical of that was the real reason. I believe that's what she said. I just don't know if that was really the reason. It could have just been something that pushed her over the edge, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true, too. That's true, too. Yeah. Okay, so then we're going to jump to Saturday, February 7th, which is two days later. Mora's dad, Fred, came to visit her in Amherst. Uh, and they went car shopping that afternoon. And then they went to dinner with one of Mora's friends. Mora then dropped her dad off at his motel room and she borrowed his Toyota Corolla to get back to campus because she was going to go to a party in her dorm. 
she arrived at the party at 10 30 p.m wait pause for two seconds i want to add i don't remember which podcast it was but someone said and i think this is like very strange and an important thing to say or just to talk about the dynamic of her and her father he went there is she under i believe she's under age right she's 20 or 21 she was born in 82. This was 2000. So she's 22 at this time. She's 22. Okay. So maybe, yes, it's not that weird, but like he went with her to buy alcohol, let her borrow the car. And like to me, it's just kind of like, well, first of all, I think it's kind of strange if your parents go with you to get alcohol, but everybody has a different relationship with their parents. But it wouldn't be strange in my family. <laughs> okay. To me, that'd just be really well, uh, anyway. So, okay. So that was one thing. But then also, too, the idea that like he's expecting her to come back with the car that night after he knew she was drinking because he went with her to get the alcohol. So I just think that's a little odd. That's a little strange to me. Maybe he was expecting her to stay over, but I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was odd, too, that she's going to a party like presumably she's going to be drinking he gave her the car i was yeah, like maybe like he, he just should expected her to her keep the car overnight or yeah i, I don't know but yeah, i, feel I thought like, that was a little strange and too. he should like if it was my child i would have dropped them off and then i would have kept the car because at least i know that like i like my child's not going to yeah. drink and drive in my car like i didn't at least that's the least i could do so i just thought that was a little strange for a second, yeah. I thought she was, like, 20, but I guess 22. So, yeah. So she she was, I think she was 21 because, yeah, okay. she was born in May, and it was – so she was, like, was about February. to turn 22. Okay, okay. Time. So she was 21. So, I mean, that's not that weird then, but I just think, like, if it were me, I would have tried to drop my child off. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So she arrived at the party at 10.30 p.m., and she left the party at 2.30 a.m. on that Sunday. So she, at 3.30 a.m., she was on her way to her father's motel when she hit a guardrail on the highway. This crash was pretty bad. It caused almost $10,000 worth of damage to the car, which that's a lot of damage. That's pretty much <laughs> the whole like car. That's totally the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a Corolla, too. So I'm yeah. like... Yeah, I'm I'm surprised I, it wasn't totaled. <laughs> yeah, I have a Corolla and I feel like a ten thousand dollar damage to my car would be almost total. Like I can't imagine. And also too, it's kind of hard to really damage Corollas too. You have to be like like that's part of the reason why I like it. It's it's a safe car. So you they're deaf yeah. And I mean yeah. if she two thirty in the morning after a party, a crash like that, you have to assume alcohol is involved. Right. So I'll get to that. <laughs> so there was an accident report, obviously, because it was a car crash, right. it, but there was no record of a performance of any field sobriety tests on her, hmm. which I thought was super odd. Yeah, that is weird. Okay. When the police like stop you, they always ask, where are you coming from? Where are you going? Yeah. So you know that they probably had a conversation about the fact that she was just at a party and yeah. it's the middle of the night. She crashed a car. The obvious assumption would be that she was drinking. Yeah. So, okay. Conspiracy brain really quick. <laughs> I wonder, so Vic, you said you have to know someone, um, I mean, you had to get a, a letter of recommendation from mm -hmm. your congressperson. So I wonder if she knew someone like in a mm. higher up type person and they kind of and to get that dismissed yeah to get it or yeah to get them to not record it to get them to not do it because all we know is it was reported that there was not one we don't know if there really wasn't one yeah it's That's a, interesting there's no record of one so maybe there was yeah. one i don't know but so following the accident mora mm. was uh, driven to her dad's motel where she stayed with him that night and another just little odd thing is that at 4.49 a.m., she called her boyfriend from her dad's phone, but that nobody knows, like, what the phone call was for or what yeah. they talked about or anything. It's just weird at that time of the morning that she, yeah. she would call from her dad's phone. So yeah. just another odd little tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so later on that Sunday morning, Fred and Mora started the insurance claim process to get Fred's vehicle repaired. Uh, 
he then rented a car, dropped Mora off at her dorm, and then returned to Connecticut. He called Nora that or Nora Mora <laughs> <laughs> that night at 11:30 p.m. to remind her to get the accident forms from the Registry of Motor Vehicles. And they agreed to talk again the next night on that Monday night to discuss uh, just the insurance forms and like how they were going to go about filling out and filing those. So then we get to Monday, February 9th, which is disappearing. Day. Day. Yeah. It's also so. my dad's birthday, interesting enough. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun fact. <laughs> so after midnight on Monday, so like very beginning of Monday, February 9th, Mora searched on her computer for directions to the Berkshires and Burlington, Vermont on like MapQuest. Remember MapQuest? Yeah, TBT. <laughs> My mom will like, still wow, this ages this case. <laughs> My mom will still say stuff like, "Did you check MapQuest or something like that?" And I'll be like, "No, hun, just it's the phone." No, it's you just you, you just type it right in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would do without my phone GPS. Oh, honestly. I don't know how I, people functioned. Yeah, I've, I wouldn't. I've lived in San Diego for over two years now, and I still don't know my way around here. Yeah, <laughs> I I have no idea how to get anywhere really, other right. than like places I went to as a child. Yeah, and I yeah. barely remember that. <laughs> for real. Okay, so Monday, February 9th, like really late at night, she makes these map quest searches. Then uh, at 1 p.m., she emailed her boyfriend, quote, I love you more, stud. I got your messages, but honestly, I didn't feel like talking too much of anyone. I promise to call you today, though. Love you, Mora. So that to me kind of indicates that she's in like a weird headspace because mm -hmm. she's not wanting to talk to anyone. I, if, I don't know if it's about her sister, about the car accident or something different, but yeah, she's obviously like not doing great. That's a good point. So then she, after she sent that email, she made a three minute phone call to a number inquiring about renting a condo at the same Bartlett, New Hampshire condo association that she and her family had vacationed at in the past, which I find odd because if she's wanting to rent a condo, I, I couldn't tell if that meant like a short-term rental, like she just wanted to take a trip or if she wanted to like actually like move there. there. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking too. I wonder if it was like a, well, anyway, we'll get to it. Keep going. Right. Yeah. So then at 1 13 PM, Murray called a fellow nursing student. I don't know that they picked up or that they even had a conversation reasons unknown. Uh, at 1.24 p.m., Mora emailed a work supervisor of the nursing school faculty and said that she would be out of town for a week due to a death in the family. But that was a lie. No one in her family had died. So what do we think about that? Well, I guess based off her being gone for a week, that means it's just like a rental, not like a long-term rental. Okay, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I Once again, to the death in the family thing or like to... I feel like that was just, obviously that was just a cover up in the right. sense of she just wanted to be gone. And like, the reality is you can't just leave your life unless it's something like that. Like you would have to have a death in the family or something like that to right. leave your life. Sorry, my, it looks like my lights are on, but. <laughs> you look fine to me, but yeah, like, like okay. but being a student, like you can't just go, hey, I'm going to take PTO right now. Yeah, so you right. can't do that. <laughs> so, like, if you want to take a break, go, hey, like, sorry, I got death in the family. Like, yeah, yeah nobody's going to be like, oh, well, can you verify no one's gonna that question for me? It. Like, can that's kind of a not very nice thing to do when someone's died. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, that kind of says to me, though, that she did intend on coming back. That was my next point I was going to say. It definitely shows that, like, this wasn't. You know, when we get to theories, one of the theories is that she ran away, started a new life. But I feel like doing, saying that you're going to be back in a week kind of shows that you're going, like, you're not leaving for good. It shows right. that you eventually planning on coming back. Yeah. So then at 2.05 p.m., Maura made a five-minute phone call. Can I ask her, like, is her dad still there? He left. Okay. Yeah, he went back to Connecticut. Okay. He, he left uh, the previous day. So, okay. yeah. So she she then made a five-minute phone call uh, at, asking about booking a hotel in Stowe, Vermont. 
Okay. So she's obviously like wanting to take a trip. I just don't think she really knows where she wants to go. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Vermont, just not yeah. sure where Vermont, Vermont, New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. One of those Ham- places. Yeah. New yeah. England. Sounds like she wants to go so, to New England. <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't New want to go like, super far. She just wanted to escape for a bit, it seems mm-hmm. like to me. So 2.18 p.m., Maura called her boyfriend and left a voice message promising they would talk later. So... Mora then packed her car. She took with her clothing, toiletries, textbooks, and birth control pills. And then the weird thing is when her room was searched later, uh, police discovered that her belongings were all packed up into a box. And they don't really know when she packed it, but there was an email that was printed off laying on the top of the box that that Mora had sent to her boyfriend indicating that they were having trouble with their relationship. Yeah, I think it was something about being cheated on. Like, he cheated on her. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, though, like, someone who hasn't fully unpacked her apartment, even though she's been here for, like, six months? (laughs) Like, (laughs) could it just be, like, a box she just hasn't, like, completely unpacked? And that's what I was thinking, because it was in February, so technically she had only been back to school for a couple of weeks. I wonder, like, the big thing is, like, she packed up the room, but I wonder if it wasn't even that she packed up the room. It was just she hadn't hasn't even unpacked. unpacked. Yet. Yeah, she no, hasn't well, they, they also made a point to say that all the art was not on the wall. And Dude, I so, still have stuff right. that goes up on the wall and still down. So oh, I'm like, I don't know if this is as sinister as they're making it out to be because it's yeah. totally possible she just didn't put it up yet or didn't unpack the box. But yeah. the email, I do think, is weird. The email is weird because you don't just casually do that. Like, that, to me, that's not like she wanted someone to find that. To me, it sounded like she right. was leaving a message for someone. Um Okay, yeah. well, I need to know where she is to decipher this whole email. So, she okay, had, yeah, look, we'll, get, we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vic's like, okay, but like, what's happening? <laughs> so after I'm on she my toes. Up, <laughs> so after she packed up her car, she left this around three thirty p.m., which also I find odd because campus classes had been canceled because of a snowstorm. So she's going on this trip. But it's in the middle of a snowstorm. Oh, in, New like, England, yeah. in New England, in New England doesn't can- get away. Yeah. Well, in New England, doesn't cancel classes like, like just for really a little bit of snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not, not yeah. like we do down here in South. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For real. No, seriously. Like it has to be. That's a very good point. It has to be pretty bad for them to cancel class. And she At, still wanted to go on this trip, despite yeah. the fact that driving was probably really dangerous. And I will say, too, it's not too, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, it wasn't like she was, like, she was planning this trip to Hawaii, like, and it's, like, been planned for six months, and she's right. just trying to leave. It was, like, I have to get out of here. Yeah. yeah. Like, Which, she was trying to run from something. Yes, yeah. It goes to her state of mind, like, the fact that she needs to leave this desperately. Mm-hmm. Because she was, like, planning it day of in the middle of a snowstorm, right? Yeah. That's what we think. That is what it seems... That's what it appears to be. Yeah. Okay. So then 3.40, 10 minutes after she left, she stopped and withdrew $280 from an ATM. And there was footage of her doing this, and it showed that she was alone. She wasn't with anyone. So then she went to a nearby liquor store and bought about $40 worth of alcohol She bought Bailey's Irish Cream, Kahlua, and a box of Franzia. Which is an odd combination. I don't care how you put it. That's a weird combination. Right. Like, I don't really know what her plan was with that. Sounds like, like, to me, it sounds like for multiple people. It sounds like you're going somewhere and everybody has different tastes. Mm -hmm. So you're buying for different people. That is possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Um. Again, security footage showed she was alone when she bought all that. Uh, At some point in the day, she picked up the accident reports that her dad had told her to get, which that kind of struck me as odd, too, because, again, it kind of shows that she intended to, like, follow through on this conversation she had with her dad and that she was thinking about like her real life and not just like hyper focused on escaping yes and I think that's another example of she's coming back like whatever Mm -hmm. happened it intended she intended to come back right 
So then she left Amherst between 4 and 5 p.m., presumably on Interstate 91. She called to check her voicemail at 4.37 p.m., which is the last recorded use of her cell phone. Mm. And there was never really, it was never shown that she told anyone where she was going, what she was doing. Yeah. Or, yeah, or if any, there there also wasn't really any evidence of if she ever like chose a destination because so she guess, made all those calls, she was considering all those places, but they don't really know exactly where she was headed. So she never made a reservation. She just called to say, hey, do you guys have open rooms today? Yes. Yeah, yeah she I never guess made so. a reservation. Yeah, she never, like, confirmed anywhere. As a matter of fact, and, and also, too, nobody knew she was going anywhere. Like, none of her friends knew it. Um, and then another thing, sorry, this just reminded me, um, in a, one of the podcasts I listened to, someone said that she had called her friend before she left and said that she wanted to drop off some clothes that she borrowed from her friend and her friend's like oh no it's okay you don't have to that lives in the same dorm as her well then a couple of minutes later her friend had a knock on the door and the, a bag of her clothes were at the door so that also is kind of like interesting too that she was like oh no i need to go ahead and drop my these clothes kind off of tying up loose ends yeah yeah. Which will go it's into one of the theories. There's a little bit of both. It's exactly. A little bit of tying up loose ends, but also a little bit of indication that she is going to return to her life. So like the, it's just a really odd combination. Can I say like one thing that I picked up on? She packed her textbooks. Yes. To go. And you don't do that and you don't study if you don't plan on coming Right, home. I was going to say, if I was not going to come back, the absolute last thing I would bring would be textbooks. I would be <laughs> collecting dust in my bedroom. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next sort of phase of this is car accident number two. So at 7.27 p.m., uh... A resident of Woodsville, New Hampshire, heard a loud thump outside her house, and through her window, she could see a car against the snowbank. Uh, the car, let's see. And, the, and I will ask, this storm was hitting, like, all of New England. It was a big storm. Yeah, yeah it was not so just in Massachusetts. She, yeah, she had driven a bit, but it was still, the, the snowstorm was covering the area she went to. So... This woman who saw the car accident outside of her house called the sheriff's department at 727 to report the accident. She, the woman, this is weird. The woman claimed to have seen a man smoking a cigarette inside the car, but she later said that she never saw that. So I don't really yeah. know what to do with that was. I saw that. That was strange for yeah. a myriad of reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. And, but I we know eyewitness testimony is not very reliable. I it's, mean, it's generally not. Yeah. yeah. People, like, it, I mean, and if you think about it too, if you saw someone just for like a second and then someone was like, did you see this man? Can you describe him? You wouldn't be able to. Right, right. Like right. the human mind is just like the, me the memory is so and, unreliable. And we fill in things like our brain. So in another podcast I was listening to, they were saying that, um, they said they wonder if it was just like her with like back because it was the beginning of phones so what if she had a flip phone and the, the it was dark outside because it's in february at 7 p.m in new england so like it's dark outside at that time so maybe it was just super dark and she saw like a a flash the phone was on and there was like a light and like maybe she thought it was like a lighter like how the old cigarettes used to be something like that like and your brain just feels like you, if you've never seen something before your brain kind of just fills in like okay what could this possibly be so it could have been a man it could have not have been a man like she could have been like like she like could have a on like she yeah. could have a hat had a coat on like yeah yeah, I don't I don't get the feeling that she this woman could see very well, especially if there was a snowstorm. <laughs> right. Like there's so many things. Yeah. Yeah. So after the accident, uh like several people kind of stopped by and I more like begged one of them not to call the police, which I thought was kind of weird. Yeah. And they said, well, we already did. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So a little odd. One so of the people really quick to is about the police thing so one of the people he stopped and he was a bus driver and for like a school bus driver mm -hmm. and um i've seen the picture of him because they mentioned and he does 
not to his not on purpose like, like not to be mean to him but he did look kind of like scared kind of like red alert red alert and he wanted to call the police and offer to give her a ride but she said no so in so half of me is like in her defense maybe she was like okay this guy's kind of creepy i'm kind of scared um oh she not only did she sit not not only did she say no, she said um, she had already called. And that's how they knew there was something off because there's no cell service where she was. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so then the other half of me is kind of like, why would she not want help if she's in the middle? It's the middle of a snowstorm. She's by herself and she was in an accident. And I don't know if you're going to mention it yet, but the, there was a cup, a, a Coca-Cola cup, and inside there was traces of wine. So mm -hmm. she had been drinking. So all these things yeah. were together. Well, I guess with the drinking part, maybe that's why she wouldn't want him to call. But like also too, like I, if you know you're in that state of mind, wouldn't you want help? Like I feel like you would want. I don't know. And if she got out of the right. DUI before, I mean, I'm sure if she really needed to. She could do it again. I don't know. That's that part is yeah. very strange to me that she didn't ask for help. Nick, what were you going right. to say? Right. Yeah, we're gonna get to what the police found. It's very bizarre. So at 7.46, so like not even 20 minutes later, the police showed up and there was no one in or around the car. They, they saw that the car had hit a tree and it like pretty severely damaged her car. The windshield was cracked, both airbags deployed, mm -hmm. and the car was locked, which I, that, that to me, I, she probably locked it. Yeah. Because if you're outside of the car, the only way to lock it would be to hit the button. Yeah. Yeah, so she had to lock it, which also kind of makes me think another thing. If she locked it, does that mean she wanted to come back? Like, and she planned on coming back to the car eventually. Yeah. So inside and outside of the car, they saw red stains that appeared to be red wine. And inside the car, they found an empty beer bottle, and a damaged box of Franzia wine, the one that she presumably bought at the liquor store. Um, he found a AAA card, blank accident report forms, gloves, compact discs, makeup, diamond jewelry, just sort of an odd yeah. combination of things. <laughs> an odd combination, but also just, once again, just a regular, like, 20 year old car random stuff probably not the alcohol because you know it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to be driving around much alcohol but just having a bunch of random things here random things there also too now that i'm thinking about it, i wonder why she wouldn't take the triple a card with her yeah because you would need to know the number um to call and there's like a barcode you would need to know that if triple a is going to come and help you that's interesting right right all weird stuff yeah. So the police also saw that she had like a package of wine coolers and it was like a 12 pack, but four of them were missing. Oh, so they I were thinking, that. yeah, yeah, it was weird. So, so she was drunk. She was like presumably drinking and driving. So odds are she was under the influence. And that would make sense why she was begging them not to call the police. Yeah. Then, she didn't yeah, get yeah, in trouble. yeah. 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 But yeah. So basically just a weird abandoned car accident scene and just no sign of mora anywhere so between oh, eight and sorry eight, oh sorry Go other ahead. thing really quick so um and then the people on missy mora podcast they said that the time between um so you said i think it was like 20 minutes until the police fully came out but there was a time between someone saw her and the police came, so somewhere in the 20 minutes, and that was seven minutes. So there was, like, a seven-minute window that she just disappeared. Like, yeah. everybody, they they were saying that, like, it seemed like everybody, like, turned their back for seven minutes because where it was, um, if I could find a picture, maybe I'll post it somewhere, where the accident was, it wasn't, like, in the middle of the woods or anything. It was almost in a neighborhood. There were people who saw it. Like you were saying, there were people who saw it. So, like, she was there and people knew that she was there but there was a seven minute window of just like wait where'd she go yeah yeah so between 8 and 8 30 p.m someone saw a young person walking quickly 
on foot. And it was kind of around where the vehicle was. And he noted what the person was wearing. It was jeans, a dark coat, and a light colored hood. Hmm. He didn't report it to police immediately, but a few months later he did. So okay. there's some speculation as to whether or not this actually happened or if it might have been Mora or not. Yeah, I haven't heard this. It's kind of odd. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, but it's still something. Something to think about, something for them to, the police to at least look into. Mm -hmm. For sure. So they drove around and they were trying to find her, trying to see if maybe she was walking around somewhere, but they never found her at 9.30, or sorry, at 8.49 p.m. the car was towed. Um, at 9.30 the responding officers left. So... It was kind of like, what are we supposed to do? This girl's yeah. nowhere to be found. So just and that's I, kind of how the night ended. Yeah. And I think also, too, from their perspective, they were probably just thinking, oh, this part, looking at it, okay, this girl must be young. She crashed her car. She's drunk. She's probably just walking to find some place to call. It's just not even a missing person. It's just a car accident and we'll probably figure out where she is tomorrow when it's not dark and when it's not snowing she's sobered up and, and when she's sober she's probably gonna come and say oh something because apparently um that happens a lot like people will if they were drunk they'll f leave their car sober up and then be like oh my god what happened to my car right. um so because that's they can't charge you with drunk driving the next day because they can't right. test evidence is alcohol gone. yeah right right so maybe that's what they were thinking. Just like, yeah, oh. that is possible. So Mallory, you want to tell us about some of the theories of what might have Wait, happened? Wait, okay, so she, she's <laughs> because, gone. Like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we thought, so that's it. We we have no idea that was it. Nobody knows where she is. So they've never found like any no body nothing nothing and this wasn't like the middle of nowhere it's like a decent residential area correct correct it was um, a neighborhood it, it was in a neighborhood pretty much now it wasn't like it was more of like waxaw ish i'm it sounds yeah like. but yeah 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 but it wasn't like in the middle what? of nowhere where no. it's like miles between farms can no, i no, say no, like no. one thing that's interesting it's like if she was traveling to a destination why was she in a neighborhood? Ooh, I've never thought of that. Because, like, when I, like, I don't drive off into a neighborhood if I'm going to, like, somewhere. Like, it's, like, highways, roads. And it's, like, you said it's, like, a residential neighborhood. It wasn't, like, it was just, like, a drive-through, like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it's like where you guys live. And, honestly, I'm really not that familiar with the northeast at all but yeah. i'm from the midwest i'm i was i grew up in minnesota and when you're driving in the midwest it is totally possible that you could be driving somewhere and just end up kind of on a country road and sometimes they do go through neighborhoods so okay it's possible i don't know much about the northeast like i said but it, it is a good point it's possible she just got I'm off the road and wasn't really even sure where she was going i'm looking up a picture really quick just to see um okay okay so yeah i mean okay vic that was a good point but okay i'm just gonna send it to you guys because if i show you on okay. the screen it's not gonna um so it was kind of like a neighborhood you could drive through yeah yeah i think that you yeah i guess um i'm sending it to both of you I'm just saying, like, usually, yeah. like, a neighborhood, they don't plan neighborhoods around major highways. Yeah, that's a good it's point, It's kind of, like, my only, like, thought. It's, like, usually, because of, right. like, the noise issues, yeah. it's not well, usually around major highways. It, this, it gives me very, uh, Waxaw, um, Weddington vibes. Okay. Um, so, like, the where it circle is where the car was found that the red circle yeah so, i mean i guess it's not like a it does look residential like a wide residential. road yeah. yeah yeah like it's not it is possible she was headed somewhere 
okay. yeah. on that road. Yeah. But no, that was a good point. Um, I'm just looking at it and it just leads, gets me back to the point that there was tons of people there. Like, there's no way, like, that seven minutes is very interesting or even if it was 20 minutes where nobody saw her, it's just very interesting, like, what could have happened in that short amount of time that absolutely nobody saw or nobody knows where she is or anything like that. Especially because it was such a short period of time. Seven minutes, that's a very short yeah, period yeah. for something crazy to happen that a nobody very would very short period. Okay, yeah. Vic, do you have any other questions before we get into theories? And then you can tell us your theory. Okay. Um... So uh, she just vanished, and then was like, never. There's obviously been people who have like been like, oh, I I saw her in Canada. I'll get into that in a little bit. That's well, I guess like there's the never. Ones. I guess my question is, has there been any concrete evidence since she's vanished? Not even. Here's the other thing too. There's not even a person of interest mm. involved at all. They have almost nothing. Yeah. And that's why this one is so fascinating because it really does feel like she just disappeared out of thin air. And there's been like one or two others that I've heard of that are similar to this. There, people just thin air, no, nothing, no evidence, not, no, they just aren't there. Yeah. What's mm -hmm. the name of the guy? Are you familiar with the guy who disappeared from the nightclub in Ohio? I forget what his name is, oh. but he's, it's a similar situation. He was, was out he, with friends and they just, he, they couldn't find him. And they were like, oh, he must've just gone home. And he just was never seen again. Was it the one where they're like walking and they turn around and he's not there, but they're like, oh, it's so cold. Something like that. Was that the one? I just heard one about that. Um, no, this one was different. Well, let me, let me get his name. Hold okay. on. Okay. Well, and I'll ask my last question. There was no evidence of anyone else in the car with her. There was no evidence of anyone else in the car. Like they did, like, DNA evidence, like, making sure, like, everything that was kind of, yeah. like, they done thorough investigations yeah. on There's this. No They've been evidence. investigating it for years and years, and they yeah. have nothing. Because mm -hmm. this happened in 2004. Yeah. And there's People no evidence. Still. Yeah. There's no evidence that there was anyone in the car with her, but there, we'll get to the other part in one second. Um... Mm -hmm. So oh, Brian Schaffer is the name of the guy. His name about. sounds so yeah, his name does sound familiar. It's a was similar this thing. Oh gosh, when was this? This it was around it was 2006. Okay. So, that name sounds so familiar. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the guy um who was in a crash and he was on the phone with his family or something, and he said someone was there and was, like, running away, but there was no evidence that anyone was there. And then I was also thinking about the guy, this one's a little bit more popular, where he was, he hurt his ear or something like that, and he was in the airport, and they told him that he had to, he was approved from a doctor or something like that. He freaked out, and he just booked it out of the airport, ran, nobody knows what happened, he booked it out of the airport, and then that's it. That's the last. Nobody has no idea where he is. That's the one I was thinking about as well. Okay. But anyway, the point is, though, like, this <laughs> seems to happen a lot. Um, <laughs> but it really isn't that common. It just feels like it if you're yeah. in the true crime world. I, um, just, I feel like they usually have something, though. Yes. It's rare that they have nothing. Yes. Usually there's at least a lead or somewhere that they can think, which is why, which is part of the lore of the Maura Murray story, but it's also part of the problem of the Maura Murray story because then you have a bajillion theories. I, there's two main theories, um, and then there's a bunch of just random little ones. I will talk about um, the random little ones first, I think. So, sure. um, trigger warning. Um, one of the theories is that she committed suicide. And we kind of touched on this a little bit about how there were a few things that she did that seemed like she was kind of like wrapping up. Um, the email, the packing the clothes, um, not wanting anyone to know where she was. So like telling the, the, um, the guy who was going to help her, like, don't make that call. To me, that also kind of sounds like that. But there's, uh, and then apparently she had problems with her boyfriend. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any, like, concrete, like, oh, yeah, this girl is um, going through that. It did seem like how we mentioned earlier, though, that she was kind of going on a downward spiral. Um, and, 
you know, I don't like to. Well, I guess my question is like, do you think like she crashes her car, runs away, and carries what she's going to use at for her suicide? I just think they would have found a body. I was about to say that. I think if she was really going to commit suicide, they would have found a body. Well, you know, I say that. So, um, there was this guy when I was in college at Seton Hall. He's the only person I. I mean, I didn't even really know him, but he's the only person I know that's gone missing. He was, we called him the Heelys kid. Like, that was who he was on, like, um, Yik Yak, because he wore Heelys all the time. So, like, when you get people, oh, spotted the Heelys kid at blah, blah, blah. Like, that's what they say on Yik Yak. I feel like every college has one of those. Has a Heelys kid. Just a guy that everyone <laughs> knows about. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently, um, he, like, disappeared, and they never... Well, but okay, here's the other thing. They left, he left a note. I was going to say, they never found his body, but. Um, they never they found believe, his body? They never found his, he, wow. committed, he committed suicide because of the note. People assume he left a note and they commit, he committed suicide, but they never found his body. Wow. But I guess that will be the difference between him and Mara then, because she didn't leave a note. Um, Was, like, there a body of water nearby? It didn't look like it. Let me look at the picture again. I don't think so. I think it's pretty easy for them to cover bodies from that, though. That's what I'm saying. Because they float I, eventually. They eventually float. And sometimes they'll even drain bodies of water. I mean, yeah. unless it's like a river and she's just heading down river and like no one catches it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was also thinking maybe snow it could have been mar- buried, but eventually the snow will melt. Right. Um, so, yeah, I just, I don't think, I think this is one of the least, like, credible theories i i mean like we said though there were things that indicated she was coming home and things that indicated that she was wrapping up which to me leads me well i'll say what my theory is at the end she was potentially trying to decide like she was kind of in between i think she was trying to decide i think that she was in the middle of a a break i think she was having a, a a what is it um we were on a break yeah but in your mind um yeah 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 a manic yeah. episode. I think she was manic. I think she was manic. But we'll right, get to yeah, that. I almost wonder. I mean, I would think maybe it would be plausible if, you know, she crashed the car and it was just, that was just it. She was just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm out of here. If, yeah. if she intended on going back, but then that car crash happened and she was just like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Okay. But that's a good point. Again, they would have found a body. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do think they would have found, I don't think it's normal not to find a body or mm. at least not to have like a note. I mean, cause some indication, some, there would be so much more leading up to that other than like the tiny things here and there. Right. Um. So that's one of them. Another okay. one, Um. this is also a really poor one is um a police cover-up some people think that the police are covering up something um Mm. because of how long it took them to get to the crash site i believe is one of the reasons but couldn't you make the argument it was such a big snowstorm they were having trouble getting there uh of course you can super accessible area yeah when it's more rural it does take them longer yeah, especially I, in a snowstorm. And uh, I think that that is just one of the ones where, so like I was saying, like people just make up stuff to add. Um, and then let me, sorry, there's like a list I was looking at. I want to, I don't, I only heard this theory in like one podcast, but there was a list. I'm just going to see if this is in there. Okay, it's not even in that list. But that's mm-hmm. just something someone said that people kind of think, because there's tons of Reddits about it. And they were saying like, on some of the yeah. Reddits, people were saying it, it could be a cover up. Like something happened, like maybe the police took too long to get there or the police came and maybe they accidentally hit her or something like that. And they're like covering it up. And right. because I will say her father does not think that they've done a really good job. But I mean, I hate to say this, but a lot of people say that because if you if people don't yeah. find their missing loved one within time, safe and alive, you mm-hmm. nine times out of 10 are upset and you think that the police isn't doing their job. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I can't even imagine how that would feel. Um, so another one is that she simply just ran into the woods because um, we saw in the picture there's, like, woods, that she just simply ran into the woods and um, she just died because of the elements. She got lost or something like that. Mm-hmm. But once again, I feel like we would have found a body. They would have eventually. They did very thorough searches of those woods and yeah. nothing. 
I just, I don't, I think that is one of the sane ones. Um, and, you know, there's obviously the one she was abducted mm-hmm. by aliens. Um, she just. That's what my boyfriend would say. <laughs> she thinks abducted. everything is aliens. <laughs> <laughs> aliens have abduct- abducted her and, yep. you know, she's she'll come back one day. Um, but the two that I think are the most plausible, um, I will get into now. And these are the two that are, um. Yeah, I think that was just most plausible. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the tandem vehicle idea. So Vic, what you said about, was there someone else? Some people believe because when the tracking dogs were there, the tracking dogs kept her scent until 100 feet and then it just like nothing. But I mean, you can also argue that like maybe the dogs just didn't, couldn't go on. Well, I guess like how long could like, it lasts in the snow and like the elements like that true but that's just one of the arguments they had about the tandem vehicle that she um someone was driving with her and she got in the car with them and helped her run away and escape because Mm -hmm. they were saying they were talking about how um she was having problems with her boyfriend her life was going on a downward spiral it seems um can i ask one thing did they ever say like she was doing well in school though I don't know. That's unclear. I will say so in another podcast, um, but I only heard this in one podcast, so I don't know how true it is because that's another thing too. They were um, like listening to other, so there's like two different types of like um, true crime. There's like true crime that is like, they spend months researching something. They write out a script. They have done, they order, uh, some people like order the, um, you know what I'm trying to say, Abby? The thing that you have to order, um, the the police case reports, files. case files, yeah. oh, and yeah. they spend and they like, do like a huge deep yeah. dive. Into there's it. those, yeah. and then there's those that kind of do it almost not entertainment, but like kind of just like kind of like what we're doing, kind of just like in, in talking about it, just to discuss it to bring out just different topics just an so, episode like they like they have a new topic every episode but then there are yeah. like whole podcasts that are dedicated to one like case. a season yeah because yeah. like yeah. i will say the only true crime i listen to is called slow burn but it was like political true crime so like one uh-huh. season was like the nixon impeachment and next season was clinton's impeachment oh mm, that's interesting. interesting yeah so the one that I heard that was more of like this, more of like entertainment. They're the only people who mentioned this. Actually, two of them. Sorry. It was the Mile High and Crime Junkie. So this aspect, um, I didn't hear for the people who did the deep dives and who take it very, a little bit more seriously. They, like, it's their life work. So this is mm-hmm. what I, this is what they said. I am not 100% sure the validity of this. Because like I said, it wasn't in all of them. They said that Mora was also having a problem with stealing. She stole her friend's card. I don't know if you've heard this, Abby. She stole one of her friend's cards and was using it to order food. And she was buying, like, large amounts of food. Trigger warning again. The theory is that she was buying large amounts of food and she had an eating disorder and she was eating it and purging. Mm. now once again there's not but that hasn't been confirmed that that she was having a disorder like the um for example the documentary i watched and like i oh i also listened to like a nancy grace episode they didn't even mention this at all Mm -hmm. so i don't know how true this is i'm guessing maybe this came from like friends and um but all that to say it sounds as it like if this is true you are seeing that her life kind of is not going the way she wants it to go which makes me think that she could have like once again I think she could have been in the middle of a manic episode that to be all of this sounds very manic it sounds like she's in a manic episode it sounds like um she's just yeah um, has, it, has she had any like mental health issues in the past like that's been confirmed no, but statistically, um, mental health usually shows up um, in college. Like, mm-hmm. and I'll say even for myself, I don't think I was ever really like sad, like super sad or like de- the word depressed until college. And I think yeah, that, that and honestly, yeah, I was going to say, I don't really know anyone else who didn't have that experience. So I, I think a lot of this, um, like statistically, this stuff appears. Okay. So that's why I yeah. think it, that's what I think happened. Um but anyway, so the all of these things, um, they said that someone came and like 
went with her and then there's a theory that she might have also been pregnant because she was looking online um she googled like can drinking affect a baby or something like a, a pregnant baby so they think she could have also been pregnant um so they think that she got in a vehicle and she just disappeared and they think that she went there's a theory that she is in canada because there's been some people who believe they have seen her in canada mm. um and where she was wasn't too far from canada i believe is what um uh, where the crash site was um why so why are they claiming she'd be in canada just running away to get away that's like, just uh, where she went to start over yeah where she started over that is what some people believe um mm. so the theory that i believe which is the next one is that she was murdered i think that um something happened so the crash happened and someone nefarious got her in that short amount of time um I do think it's kind of strange that nobody else saw another vehicle, like, or at least they haven't reported there was another vehicle. The police hasn't haven't released a lot of information, um, which also makes me wonder if maybe there was another vehicle and that could be a way that they figure out who it was. I don't know. But um, the yeah. theory, this theory is that like she crashed and somehow within that seven minutes, um, someone came, grabbed her, and maybe drove her a little bit. Like, maybe someone came and said they wanted to help her, and she got in the car with them, and they killed her and, like, put her body someplace else. Um, and it could just be what I'm thinking. I don't know if you guys know about Israel Keys. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. So I'm So Israel Keys was a serial killer who had, like, murder kits buried all throughout was it the West Coast or like the U.S. in general? I don't. I don't really know a lot about it. I have okay. heard the name. <laughs> I think I want to say it was the West Coast, but we can talk about him another day. But like, yeah. the point is, like, he was a serial killer that would just go to different states, and he had murder kits hidden places, and would just murder people. So it was kind of hard. Like, you couldn't put it all together because it was just all they were all separated. So that's why I'm thinking it could be something along those lines. Something like that could have happened yeah, to her. And I guess it would be easy to target because it's like a snowstorm. No one else is on the road. Yeah, no one else is on the road. Um she's by herself. Like I think it would be and honestly like get in my car. I have a gun. You're not gonna that doesn't take seven minutes to do. That can take no less than a minute. Someone yeah. could look away and look back and all of a sudden she's gone and the car yeah. is gone. I think yeah. that's probably the one I would believe too. Yeah. Is that she got in a car with someone, whether she was hitchhiking or someone just pulled over and snatched her or whatever it is. And it just went undetected. So they don't even have a suspect or anything. Yeah. Especially because it was the middle and it seemed like it was a perfect storm. So my full theory is she was in the middle of a manic episode. She decided she wanted to just get away for a week, which I mean, I've felt that way before. I've never actually gone through with it, but I definitely know how that feels to be in the middle of just so many. I mean, she crashed the car and I'm sure like, I know that when I've done things that I know I can make things a bigger deal than they are. So maybe she made it a bigger deal. Like, oh gosh, I, all I do is hurt people. I crash this car, something like that. She's in the middle of a manic episode. She's, you know, doing all these things. She's just, all this stuff, making calls. And she's just, especially because she, I think you made a good point. She just left in the middle of a snowstorm. Like she's yeah. just up and left. Like she was what? really, really desperate to get out of there. Exactly. exactly. A lot of stuff in her life. I mean, none of it's really verified, but a lot of stuff in her life was kind of piling up, it seemed. Like, exactly. Her so boyfriend, she was... crashing the car, uh, the, her mental health, whatever yeah. it might be. Some people say she was drinking a lot. She might have kind of, you know, gotten a little lost in drinking too much. And Because her family stuff... does have history in alcoholism. I do yeah. know that. Yeah. 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 All of that stuff added together could have led to her just being like, I need to get out of here. Yes, exactly. So I think that was, and the plan was to eventually come back, but she met, something happened and she met her demise. I think she could be, you know, there's thousands of Jane Doe's all across the country. I, well, no, I guess not because her fingerprints and all that stuff is in CODIS now, but like, I, it wouldn't surprise me if in a couple of years we find her body somehow. I do, I think she just, the plan yeah. was to come back, something happened and now she's she's yeah. gone and whoever it is clearly 
this was not their first that's another thing too clearly whoever it was it was not their first time i don't mm -hmm. i think this was a spur of the moment i don't think anyone was like stalking her right. or anything like that i think it was a spur of the moment and because it was spur of the moment and they did such a good job covering up i think it was not their first time just that's saw the theory. opportunity and did it i agree mm -hmm. i think you're right mm -hmm. did they I, I also i think yeah. this case is gonna get solved I, really I think do. so too. I, I think point. so too. Mm -hmm. Because here's the other thing too. Like, like I've been saying this whole time. This is probably one of the most covered cases, even though people are obsessed with this. Yeah, case. I mean, this the people who did the missing Murray. Like, they quit their like. This was their job. They this became is, obsessed. Yeah. People have written books about it, and that's another thing, too, this guy, and I don't even really want to get into it, because, like, I think it's so disrespectful, but he made allegations about what, how her dad treated her in, like, a not nice way. You can, whatever yeah. you're thinking is what he said, whatever mm -hmm. you're thinking, and I think that's so disrespectful, but anyway, like, my whole point being, like, people, web sleuths solve crimes all the time. I, I think that's how amazing. yeah so I, I think we're gonna it's going to be solved and we're going to figure it out I think it's a matter of just one person to figure like say what happened because at the end of the day like there had to have been one person because the only thing to me um her right into the woods and or um suicide those are the only ones that would not involve anyone else but mm -hmm. we would have found the body there's no right. way we would not have found the body we would have found the body and also to yeah so there mm -hmm. has to be one other person who has seen saw seen something did something like it's i think it's going to be solved and it's going to be very interesting did they search the houses like no okay so mm -hmm. here's another thing in the documentary i was watching um the guy in the bus that offered to help her and she said no and because she had already called just give me background she said no because she already called he went back and called and he had a common law wife his friend said well he's unfortunately he's dead now so when the documentary that i watched came out they couldn't interview him but his friend said that no one went to his house because he was a hoarder mm, and the police never searched everyone's houses around so i don't necessarily know if like i want to say suspect but i do know that on the um on the documentary they said that the police does not have any persons of interest so the police don't even think he's guilty or well, i mean like why that. wouldn't you search like okay this girl's been saying it was like right here can we please search your property they need probable like, cause they can't just search anything they can't no <laughs> it's like just do it like we gotta oh, find i was just like i was like help. thinking about <laughs> Who was the guy, I think it was, like, a, up in Ohio that had those three women kidnapped for, like, 10 years? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know the guy you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm like, thinking of, like, a situation like that where she's just, like, kidnapped oh, in the basement. Yeah. And it's just, like, she just happened, like, she just, it was just unluckiness that that's where her car wrecked. Yeah. Because I didn't she that say there was wild. one guy who was, like, a neighbor that said, oh, I saw her walking? Didn't yeah. you say that up front? Yeah. yeah but why yeah. would you? Why would he wait like seven, like or a couple, not seven months, but like, it's like couple, three months? Yeah, I sorry, yeah, like yeah. three months. Like, why would you wait three months to disclose that information? Yeah. Unless you're trying to get them to be like, huh, like, mm -hmm. not think about like, well, maybe like she's around here instead of like, oh no, I saw her walking. It yeah. kind of like so deters. maybe he was trying to get them to think she was somewhere else. Or yeah, because I think when people. Because I think people focus on her, because, and, like, hearing you guys, like, it sounds like people are focusing on her, like, walking away, and, like, she just, like, left the scene all of a sudden, and that seems like the main focus, but, like, it's all because it's something that this guy disclosed, like, two, three months after the fact. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's a good point. Yeah. So, she could still be there. She could, well, I don't know if, it sounds. Well, if, I mean, I would be, they like. probably aren't. She probably isn't still there, but she yeah, could have been there. God, I hope that girl is not locked in a basement. Yeah, somewhere. Oh, especially why well, I'm thinking the hoarder got like I, you know, I don't want to like put it on him because just because you're a hoarder doesn't mean you're a murderer. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I feel like especially if no one goes to his house because he is this hoarder, I think it'd be very easy for him to hide, hide. Yeah, the girl. it would be easier. Yeah, I'm just surprised like yeah. no one was like, hey, like. 
you are claiming this no one's seen it like i'm i mean i know like why they can't but i'm just surprised they haven't try to find a way to search the houses nearby because like the houses are out in the middle of nowhere they've looked the woods there's nothing in the woods so it's like okay like let's search these people's property let's search these people's property i just doubt that they have enough evidence to yeah get probable cause to search them i'm i'm guessing i don't know these it's definitely no probable cause it would have to be hey do you mind do what I said. It would have to give them consent. Yeah. Yeah. But then it also is like one, the two, three, well, then also four, like the woman who heard the crash and just like looked out. Like if I heard a crash outside and I see someone crash outside my home, I would be going out there to help. That is odd yes. that she just immediately called the police and then didn't go outside. I mean, it was a bad well, snowstorm. I was but... gonna say the snowstorm, I think. Yeah. And then also too, like we're southerners. We would probably go out with, like, tea and, like, a blanket and come stay in our home. But, like, (laughs) not everybody is like that. But I do think that in the Midwest, too. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, I just, like, like, regardless of, like, hospitality, I would have been, like, like, yeah, it's, like, snowing out. But, like, I would make sure that they're at least, like, not, like, dying right there, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, you would think. But, well, I mean, looking at this thing, it's multiple people saw it that was what mm. everybody kept saying multiple people saw it. and looking at the picture again i think i'll put the i'm going to do a blog well i'll do a blog post about this a little bit and i'll, I'll put the picture on here look at the picture again but they go ahead multiple people saw it there definitely could be like they could have gotten consent and gone to one two three four I that, that's my them. thing too like when you describe it i'm thinking like houses literally next to each other these look to be at least a half acre to an acre lots. Like, there's literally, if, like, the circles where she's crashed, correct? Yes. Like, that would, looks like it's just, like, two houses. Two to three houses. But yeah. Max. It that made a lot of noise, solid. though, so they were all at least alerted to it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, they were, that's why I feel like. It made a loud noise, and I wonder where the lady's house was. It made a loud noise, so in my head, I'm like, I wonder if that also means all these people saw, so all these, like... But it's not, like, a hundred people that live on a block. It's probably, like, six adults max. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they could have... I don't know. Someone, def- like, thinking about someone definitely could have and should have gone out to check on her. But also, but here's the other thing, too. The guy in the school bus, maybe it's one of those things, oh, the guy in the school bus has her. And then he just, and, like, they probably know he's um, safe, but, you know, so they're right. like, oh, she'll go, he'll help her. They probably didn't think that she said no to him. Let me show you guys um, um, the picture of him just so you can know and I feel so bad because like um you know he probably was a good guy but it's just everybody that I talked to or tra- I talked everybody I listened mean, to talked about how he was just kind of um creepy but I will say like if I was in her shoes like regardless of what the man looks like I wouldn't like feel comfortable being like alone with a strange man i don't know yeah i'm very on guard with that kind of stuff also looking at this picture i absolutely would have said no to a ride from that (laughs) (laughs) and i feel bad because that's just how he looks but like i know it's just like you just get a certain vibe from some people yeah Yeah. i will say he looks like the basketball coach from one tree hill like that's the that's how (laughs) i was really kind of does okay i've never seen one tree hill but interesting um (laughs) but yeah like See, I don't know, though, because I, myself, I'd be like, oh, my God, it's snowing. I can't believe this. Like, this man, I, to be honest, I think I would have, because in my head, I'd be like, well, A, a serial killer is not going to be driving around in a school bus, and if you pass the background for a school what bus. What time of day was this at? It was, like, 7, 7 at night? p.m., yeah. 7.30-ish, yeah. But why was he in a school bus? He had finished his route. He was a bus at driver. 7.30? But well, they, they drive to sporting events. Yeah, stuff, I was going like, to say. Yeah, but that's I would, not that strange to me. I disagree because if school was canceled for her for this snowstorm, 
why would they be having a like basketball? That's game? a good point. But she's at, she's not. This is New Hampshire. She was in Massachusetts. But that's literally Massachusetts. next to each other. You said it was like this huge snowstorm that encapsulated all the Northeast. See, I still I think it's possible, and I feel like that's a good point. But, but if like it, they but if it, like the that, snow, oh, but okay, but if the snow was so bad, why wouldn't someone come out to help her? Exactly, because the snow was so know. bad. I no, think because I'm, I'm no, thinking like from saying. a selfish mindset, the snow was so bad they wouldn't come out to help her. And then they said, "Oh, we know Frank. I forgot his name. We know Frank is a good guy. Oh, there's he has the bus. Okay, who he'll no, help no, no, her." But what I'm they saying all is think like someone okay. else is doing something. Yeah, but I, and, what I'm saying is like if the snow was so bad that like the neighbor couldn't come out, why would they be having like kids in school and doing events? Oh, oh, oh. That, that yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, right. if it no, was and so I agree bad, with that. that's a good point. Like, well, I don't. I feel. I wonder if it was. Well, and I will say, too, regardless, like, if they're able to go to school, but it's still a snowstorm, I would imagine they would cancel after school activities because, like, the number one thing is just to get school done. They want to do it because it's going to get dark, stuff will freeze over. Like, I find it very suspicious that a bus in the middle of a snow, school bus in the middle of the snowstorm was still out at 730 at night. Well, see, I don't, I really don't think it's that suspicious. I'm, so I'm thinking of possible reasons. Maybe because the snowstorm was bad, they were trying to get everybody home and it was taking longer. Yeah. I feel like that's possible. Possibly maybe he was driving, maybe it's one of those play, school systems where you can drive it to your house and maybe he went somewhere and he was driving to, driving it home because he lived in one of those houses. Like that was the other thing too. Like he, he lived in that in one of these that was on the but map. So if he was coming home, that's still late to get home after dropping kids off. Yeah, but I'm thinking, like, what if it was just, like, a really bad... Well, okay, but what if he dropped them off at, like... He finished dropping them all off at 5, and the storm was really bad. He's going slow. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't know. That's so, like, awful. if it were me... Like, this is what I was thinking. If it were me, I would think, okay, he drives a bus for a school, so he had to pass some sort of background check to be around the kids. I don't think they really do that. They probably do now. I don't know I about certainly that. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do for churches. Like to work in the children's church, you have to pass back. I mean, them. my school bus driver driver in middle school was on drugs. So, well, I don't great. really know. You know the what? That, no, this huh. is good for me to know because, like I said, I would have gotten in the bus with him. But now that I know that, you like, stop doing this. I think the Uber discussion. I think yeah. I probably would have just gotten back in the car and waited for the police. Like, but okay. But the thing is, if he's gonna attack, attack you. I mean, all he has to do is just shoot through the car. So I don't yeah. know, like, I don't know. Oh, well, and that's why some people think, like, she might have been scared, so that's why she went into the woods, and then she got lost or whatever. But once again, we already discussed, she would have found the body. But yeah, so um, let's wrap this up. Anybody have closing thoughts? And then we're going to go with our OG lesson of the night. Uh, I think she's in one of those houses. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That's Could Or, be. like, I'm curious to see if someone has, like, moved out of one of those houses. Like, you can look it up on Zillow and, like, look, like, I bet you money someone moved out you, of them within, like, a couple months. So you really, they, you think that one of those people in the, in these houses took her? Yeah, because it makes no sense if you if you don't find the body. Wow. I I don't think I've heard anyone say because that. Because I am curious to see, too, because they said it took, like, 100 feet. Where was 100 feet? towards the woods like oh toward the a home yeah mm, okay mm. and that's why it's good that's why it's okay to listen to multiple podcasts about one topic because you're going to hear things you haven't heard before okay so you All think right. she's in the houses where do you think Abby? well i or like owner of the house like they probably have like moved since oh so yeah like, everybody's work. definitely moved i'm sure since yeah. then that was over 10 years ago unless think, she's still there i think she got picked up by someone yeah i think someone drove by or she was hitchhiking and she ended up getting in a car with someone and they did something to her i think that's what happened yeah i do too i think it was one of those things where one of those serial killers that 
go to multiple states and we're not going to find out about them for a couple years. And then he's going to say maybe for when he's when they finally find him in Jesus name, um, they finally find him and they stop him. And then he's going to be like, I want time. I have a special case for you guys. And they're like, what? And he goes, I know where Maura Murray is buried. Whoa. Maura Murray is buried. That was kind of hard to say. <laughs> yeah. And he says, I know where Maura Murray is buried. And then they find her. I, I really think it's going to be one of those situations. It's going to be yeah, a I, I killer right. that has killed all across the country. All right. So, so takeaways. Yeah. So, okay. So our OG other girl lesson. We're, I wanted to start doing this at the end, everybody, just to like wrap it up and maybe to end it on a little bit lighter note, at least. Um, so I'm going to say my takeaway lesson is really just um, when you need help, ask in the sense of like, like I said, I think she was in the middle of a manic episode. And I think uh, so many things were happening and her brain or just started freaking out. And I felt like she didn't know who to talk to or who like didn't know how to have help didn't and I think that if you're going through something like that especially in college because like we said um and honestly a lot of um a lot of the true crime things we uh learn about when the especially girls when it is when they are in college it turns out there was some sort of like mental break or something like that um so I do think like if you are in college if you are in situations I really encourage everyone to ask for help even if you feel like you couldn't you can't and I mean I'm talking to myself too like there's so many times where like I've been sad or like I've been in a really bad and I'm just like I'm just gonna figure it out I'm just gonna do it on myself like oh my gosh like but no really seriously everyone listening like ask for help like this is um even if you can't, if you don't know who to ask, I'm sure, you, if, especially if you're in school, there are mental health counselors there. Um, you can reach out to us. We can do our best. Um, you know, can't make any promises, but we definitely right. would, would try to help in any way. Just ask for help. Ask a pastor. Ask a youth leader. Ask the really sweet old ladies at your church would love to help you in any capacity. That, and I prompt like, any sweet old lady at your church, if you were like, you know what, I honestly, I'm at my wits end. I don't know who to talk to. She, she would love to, she'd probably make you some food too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a similar takeaway. I, I think too, we need to realize that you're never as alone as you probably think you are. You know, mm -hmm. when things start piling up, when things start getting crazy in your life, it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, I'm in this all alone. I'm dealing with all this stuff. And I don't have anyone to talk to and I need to just get away for a while. That is not true. Yeah. You always have people you can reach out to if a friend, honestly, anyone, even if you don't know them that well, if you just say, Hey, I'm struggling, odds are they're going to want to help you. Yeah. So just, you, just know that you're never as alone as you think you are. And you never have to just ditch everything and leave your life. Yeah. So I'll say you guys both took my original takeaway. <laughs> Okay, well, so that's good I, that we all thought give us, Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so my addition to it as, as, like, a friend or family member, just being aware when your loved one is going through a difficult time. Like, yeah. her, I feel like it's so much effort to get into West Point and then to drop it and change your career all of a sudden. Like, and I know, like, people, I don't know, like, people do that, but, like, from, like, a family's perspective, mm -hmm. should have been, like, hey, is, like, is everything okay? Like, why are you feel like you need to do this? And just, like, it should have been a red flag for her family and her friends to be, like, something's not quite right here. Plus, yeah. I think you can go into nursing at West Point, too. Well, so, that's what, that's why I think yeah. it is truth about the Fort Knox thing. I think she really did steal that because... So she was asked to leave. Basically. Yeah, I think she was yeah. asked to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't but, think yeah. she would just, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like her loved one should have noticed something was going on mm -hmm. and been conscious of this. So it's just kind of like my takeaway is like just being aware. Like I know like we can get so distracted with like work and school and like social media and well, like. It's easy to get wrapped up in your own life. Yes. Too, yes. And not really and give a second look to the people around you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And so just being aware. Also, whenever you're traveling by yourself as a female, carry pepper spray. Find some, some way to protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, great takeaways. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these were good. I really hope you guys um, enjoyed this episode. Um, I know this is one, like I said earlier, that is has been covered a lot. But I mean, I heard a new theory that I had never heard or thought about before. I don't know why anyone hasn't looked into the neighbors. Like these are the only I just people like around. Not that suspicious. I feel like you're the like, only people that think there's the only person that thinks there's suspicious. Like these are the only people that were around, and they're like, we didn't notice any cars, any other cars drive by. Like, okay, if I was like, even if I didn't want to go outside, I've been like standing at the window watching the whole time yeah you know that's like, true. like until the police come so until if, the police if, come yeah. so you're telling me that like, like and i would imagine they're okay but that's something like i don't think anyone has driven by so like why aren't these your main suspects you're, these are the yeah. only people around yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean that yeah, that's I don't know. A very I, I, I just solved the case in our because, lifetime. I would love that. I yeah. think I just solved the case. I think she's in one of those basements. Yeah, maybe you it. should email uh the police at New Mass and tell all them. that hotline. I know. I mean like yeah. hey. <laughs> have you guys thought about this? <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah, so thank you guys all for listening. Um if you enjoyed this, please like it subscribe rate review however you're listening to it youtube rumble or wherever um and also too if you have a case you think would be interesting for us to cover please let us know that'd be really interesting i'm excited for the one we're going to do at the end of the month um it's going to be really good um but if you have any other ideas or anything like that please let us know um anything else you need to add Oh, our donation. We started doing donations again. We are collecting money for um, feminine products, so pads, tampons, and we're going to, we have, um, the link is in um, on our website. You click that, you donate, and then uh, we will go buy the product and give it to women in shelters. Um, I think that's it. So, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. I'm not recording.